Hello? Yes. Uh, Mr. Florentine? Yes. I'm calling with Financial. I'd like you to receive a free proposal for their home equity line of credit. Who are you? Wait, who are you? Hello? No, 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 no uh, uh, sir, this is my house. What are you doing? Where's the money? Sir, this is my house. How did you get in here? Watch your hands, bud. Hello? What was that? S some guys in my house. Wait, do you think you should get him out? <sighs> yeah, I should, but I don't know. I don't Watch know. Your hands, buddy. Sir. Hello? Yeah. Miss, okay, keep going. I'm sorry. This free proposal is designed exclusively for homeowners. Even comes with a... Sir, what are you doing? I, I told you... Just... Ow, 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 right in the knee. Oh. Are you all right? I... Yeah, I keep going. I just... What was that? He shot me right in the knee. He shot you in the knee? He shot me in the knee, yeah. Uh, what were you saying about the equity? I'm sorry. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding, but just... Uh, Keep going? Yeah, I mean, I... This free proposal is designed exclusively for homeowners. It even comes with potential tax uh, because it is a home equity line. Look, sir, sir, I'm trying to get this equity loan. What's the interest rate? Credit line Miss, Smith, wait, miss, what's the interest rate? The guy wants to know. He's... Well, you know what? I don't think it's any of his concern. <laughs> She said it's not. What, what is the interest rate? Please tell him. I do. The guy's got a gun. Can you please, can you just tell him what it is? Uh, oh, 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 oh. Hello. Are you there? Jim Florentine is on the Adam Carolla show. Bite the bullet. Name of the special on Amazon Prime. The podcast. Everybody is awful except you. Is available wherever you find finer podcasts. Website. I guess we'll have dates on the website, right? Yeah. JimFlorentine.com. And that bumper was from uh, Jim and Don Jameson to uh, terrorizing telemarketers together. Yeah. And uh, they don't have to crank call the telemarketers. The telemarketers call them. Yeah, that's and it's the gold. beauty. That's gold. Far long time before Crank Anchors came around. Yeah, I think that was in like 2000 I did that call. <laughs> Um, I, I just did another one. There's seven volumes out. Oh, really? Yeah. That's so great. I just keep doing I'm like, yeah, why not? Why just keep doing it? <laughs> it's still funny to me. I still have my home phone lined up, you know, hooked up. I got the recorder hooked up. I pick up all the time. Well, let's see what I got here. <laughs> it's constantly ringing over and over again. It's great. Yeah, Jim doing the belch call on Crank Anchors with the guy who thought someone was on the other line. I mean, that, that was just the greatest. I was there. Oh, you were there. I, I was there going, oh, my God, we've, we've captured lightning in a bottle. Because you know, crank calls, you have the way you hope they go. And then sometimes there's the way they go, and it's not the way you'd hope they go. And then sometimes there's a sweet magical moment where there's a third way it's going which is much better than the way you hoped it would go that you can't believe we're on and that's what happened with that call and then the way they uh put it together where the guy's looking around because he's like searching around the office looking like i go look it's not me burp but it must be someone at your office and he's just moving around looking at cubicles was genius I was suck it. it was so good. I just remember sitting on the floor in that recording studio <laughs> off the strip. All right, should we do some news? Yeah, so there's this uh, new comedy special that was released. It's an hour long. It's called George Carlin, I'm Glad I'm Dead. It is an AI-generated comedy mm -hmm. special. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, when this was released, Kelly Car Carlin, George's daughter, says, My dad spent a lifetime perfecting his craft from his very human life, brain, and imagination. No machine will ever replace his genius. Let's, and then uh, with AI, and in, in uh, her response to AI, she says, let's let the artist's work speak for itself. Humans are so afraid of the void that we can't let what has fallen into it stay there. And she says, look, my dad has 14 specials that already exist. Why are we doing this? So she's not supporting it. A lot of uh, George's fans are rallying behind her. But AI generated specials now. So it sounds like she's not getting the cut. Yeah. <laughs> that's why she doesn't yeah. support it. If A, I was getting a cut, <laughs> yeah. that's what they should call it. <laughs> and B, <laughs> I'd get some back end, then A, I would be into this. <laughs> yeah, AI ain't getting a cut. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. I don't know. I, 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 I kind of envy people who have strong feelings about legacies and stuff like that because I don't give a shit about any of that I stuff. Don't either. Uh, look, it could be interesting, and it might fall under the heading of something we talked about, which is like ABBA is doing a virtual tour, tour now. You know, it, it's, you know, Michael Jackson, you know, like 
maybe there's some, maybe there's something interesting about it. I mean, I'll give you a, I'll give you an example because uh, uh, I like cars, and they make replicas of fifty million dollar cars. They they do pretty they do pretty nice replicas, and then they do other versions. Like they do like Porsche nine eleven, but Singer does their own take on a Porsche nine eleven, which is magnificent. And then there are guys who do like well, it's a twenty million dollar car or ten million dollar car, or whatever. We do a really good version of it, and it's three hundred grand, you know, which sounds expensive, but not twenty five million bucks. It's not the same thing, but it is a version of it, and it's kind of interesting. And you could get into it, and you could drive it around, and you could own it. So I don't know if there's if if that's where this is going. I mean, that's the happy version of where this is going. It's like those, uh, you know, fake designer bags you buy in Chinatown, New York City. Right. You know, you could buy the Louis Vuitton real one for four grand. You could buy one for 30 bucks. And it right. looks exactly the same. Yes. And some people don't care. Right. All right. So I guess I would just watch it and see what it what it sounded like. I think I think AI, artificial intelligence, is going to do very well, but ultimately it will fail all of us. Because yeah. Because the intelligence it's right in the name it's it's artificial it's not real well and also they go yeah but here's the thing they go like i get ai doing reams of computing and work and shit mid-level guys at an attorney's uh, you know a, or an agency do, do you know the guys in the cubicles with all the paperwork and all the grunt work they go well it, it could replace that and you go okay that's good yeah um, but then they go, it'll never replace, you know, George Carlin. But if they built a computer 30 years ago that could beat a chess champion in chess, and that's an intellectual process, you know what I mean? And that shit's 30 years old. So I think if you could, if you could beat a chess master with a computer, you could probably accurately simulate George Carlin you know what would actually be a good use of AI? What's that? I know I should have just piled forward <laughs> with my explanation. Well, I was thinking about it. I was thinking about it last night when I was done thinking about foreigner lyrics. I was thinking, you know, um, it's Oscar. It's getting time. It's Oscar time. Uh, or it's getting into Oscar time. All the award shows. You know what I mean? And Kimmel's hosting, and I'm going to ride on it. And so I'm starting to kind of pay attention who's winning the Golden Globes, who's winning the Director's Awards and all this shit, you know. And I'm, I'm kind of trying to start get a start on, like, who's going to get nominated and what are the jokes. So I'm, like, sitting around, and I'm, like, I got my notepad out, and I'm just writing Barbie over and over again and then trying to think of a joke and stuff. And then I think thought to myself I'm not I'm not that good at a fresh sh sheet of paper what you need to do is you tell me your sort of half baked barbie joke and let me see if I can tweak it and get it somewhere better you know so you're better as a punch up guy I th I can write jokes but I think I'm, I'm I'm better when I start reading other people's jokes and subjects and stuff like that and I go oh yeah okay and I realize AI could do that. You could say to AI, uh, write a bunch of Barbie jokes for the Oscars or something, and it could give you some stuff, and then you could go, well, we're not going to use this, but it's reminding me of some stuff yeah. to do. You know what I mean? That could work well. Yeah, really well. I mean, could you do that at this point? Say, give uh, yeah, me some I think Barbie that's, jokes? that's essentially what AI does at this point. It won't yeah. deliver the, you the polished jokes, but it, it might come up with a few ideas. Yeah. 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 You know, might come up with a couple Ken's gay jokes or something right. that you could massage right. artfully. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. For the Oscars. Yeah. <laughs> For the Oscars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just thought if AI spit out 20 premises... For Barbie, I I would it would, would get the juices flowing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. All right, now it looks like Chris is trying to do that. I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna see if I can do it. So we'll we'll see if it uh, if if AI if it, AI right now is like is like Don Swayze. Yeah, you know Patrick mm -hmm. Swayze was is just an Adonis, a beautiful man, great chiseled facial features. 
Don Swayze was like, you told AI, like, um, uh, okay, if if Swayze's parents had an affair with threesome with Patrick Swayze, they would end up having Don Swayze because all of his features are really. He's like, hey, it's just like if 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 Patrick Swayze would was evil in in a movie, he would look like Don Swayze. Don right. Swayze looks like. He's the only brother. He looks more like Patrick Swayze than Patrick Swayze. He is so much more Patrick Swayze. Really? I've never yeah. even seen a picture of him. Oh, man. You are going to be blown away when you do. All right. Do you have uh, uh, any in, answer? In, well, point zero one seconds, it gave me a monologue. Really? Barbie. You want me to do it? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> wow. He looks more like Swayze than Swayze. He does. But he looks like evil Swayze. It's AI. <laughs> that is that's AI. All right. Um, here, you know, okay, ladies and gentlemen, have you heard about Barbie's latest career move? Yeah, apparently she's taken up stand-up comedy. I mean, why not? She's been through every other profession on the planet. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I caught her act the other night, and let me tell you, she's got jokes as plastic as her smile. She she started with why did Ken Joe cross? Coy should have used a little. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> she started with why did Ken cross the road? I thought. This is it. We're in for a classic punchline. But no, she said, to get to the plastic surgeon. Ouch. Even I wince at that one. I guess Ken's not the only one with a plastic reputation. Right. But you might say, you know, plastic Barbie, plastic surgeon. Maybe there's something, like if there's some actress that was in it that had too much plastic surgery or something. Like there's some kernels of... There's Stuff a bit, here. It, could get, it, yeah. up. it also sounds like something any number of comedians would do on a. Yes. You know, it's. The, right. Okay. Well, so they're working on another live action Barbie movie because apparently the world was desperately craving a film about a woman who's had more careers than I've had failed diets. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm saying there's a there's a base that's yeah. being, yep. being laid, laid down. And when I was just writing Barbie, I wrote Barbie sequel. Uh, so we're on the same page yeah i mean forget barbie princess adventure i'm waiting for barbie midlife crisis edition okay like i said from there yeah all right let's uh let's keep rolling and what's the you should submit uh, those jokes to jimmy (laughs) (laughs) and see the feedback he gives you on them so dude i think i got a good hunk on barbie just give me some notes on it and see what he says jesus christ (laughs) um so britney spears Mm. Uh, speaking of music, she has went on Instagram and told everyone she vows that she will never return to the music industry. She says, just so we're clear, most of the news is trash. They keep saying I'm turning to random people to do a new album. Well, I'm not. Never coming back. Uh, okay, so my supposition is Britney Spears and to a greater extent like Paul Abdul aren't interested in music and, and never really were. You know what I mean? Like when you, you know, we interviewed Peter Frampton on the show last week. He's interested in music, you know. The, yeah. the, the, and I always say, you know, stand-up comedians, you know, you know, Louis C.K. or Chris Rock or whoever, like, you know, these guys can fill arenas, but you'll find them on a Thursday night down at the cellar at midnight working material out in front of 65 people, right? So it's like they're interested in stand up. I don't I don't think Paula Abdul or Britney Spears are really into music. I, I because they don't do it enough. They don't really talk about it that much. They kind of retire all the time. Like, you know, Britney Spears is forty two and Peter Frampton's seventy three and he's on tour right now yep. because he wants to right. play music. That that's what I don't think people I don't think people understand that. I don't think Britney Spears is a musician. Right. When Peter Frampton isn't performing, he's probably playing guitar somewhere. He's writing. Writing, writing doing something. It's like, yeah, because like Paul Abdul probably hasn't put an album out, who knows, 10, 15 years. As a comic, if I didn't do anything for 10 or 15 years, I couldn't I couldn't imagine doing that. I can't take more than three weeks off. I got to be back <laughs> in the clubs. I got to be working all the time. Right. Yeah, I'm just going to sit around, and then maybe I'll do something in 10 or 15 years if I feel like it. But it would mean that you weren't really that into comedy. Absolutely. That's what that would mean. So I don't think Britney Spears is into music. Yeah. I don't know that she ever was. I I, I just, and I don't don't think Paul Abdul, I think there's a group of people, 
I mean, Janet Jackson may not be into music. I, I just a group of people that I just don't believe are really into it. So it yeah. makes perfect sense to me that they don't do it because they don't want to do it. They don't need it. They're not compelled to do it. Yeah. And the longer she waits, just the more pressure is going to build up anyway. I mean, the last album came out in 2016. Mm-hmm. And and no music since then, and I, we've been perfectly fine. So society moves on. Yeah. Um, Do you hear Selena Gomez is gonna play Linda Ronstadt in a new biopic? That's She's what to I put heard. A lot of weight on. That's what I heard. Well, young Linda. Oh, young Linda. Okay. Young Linda was considered the babiest of all '70s babes. She was. She was foxy. Her. She had these great outfits she'd get in these short shorts and put roller skates on and, and that'd be the cover of her album she dated uh, jerry brown the governor of california they were like a hot it couple and then she was considered the foxiest chick in in rock and roll and then later on she started getting in touch with her spanish roots and putting out ranchero music. And I think she got in touch with some quesadillas and stuff too. <laughs> but she was young Linda. In her prime. Yeah, in 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 her prime. Uh yeah, we'll go get the album cover, by the way. Her biggest album was her like in, in roller skates, looking 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 all seventy skinny and trucking down the road and everything. Oh yeah, she was she was considered a stone fox. So she's gonna who's playing her? What's Selena her? Gomez. Selena Gomez, if you're gonna play twenty three year old Linda Ronset, you'd have to drop a few pounds to get to twenty three year old. Then later on, you you know, you go De Niro, Raging Bull. You yeah, know, you bulk it up. Here's a question. I have a very serious question. Guys do the move all the time where they get all ripped in great shape and then they get fat. You know, they put on 30 pounds for this role. Do women ever do it? <laughs> I, I, don't, I, think, I think they have too much ego to do it. Guys do it. There's plenty of roles where guys got fat to the do the role. Ch- the chick who played Barbie did it. Uh, and I, right? Tanya? No, not I, Tanya. Rachel McAdams did it in Mean Girls. Uh, she did. Uh, okay, hold on. Uh, she did it. Margot Robbie did it in I, Tanya? Yeah. All right, let's find a picture from I, Tanya where she's ice skating, and we'll see if that's correct. Okay, good point. <laughs> but she's not. All right, she we'll, certainly check, we'll check your math. She certainly wasn't, like, uh, 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 attractive. Totally. I said put on weight, Dawson. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, even... She, uh, but she did put on some. Seven like, pounds, okay, okay. four pounds. Yeah, what, what are we talking? She's Not playing a, a professional. Just find a picture of her ice skating, and then we'll see if Dawson's supposition is correct. Because yeah. like Renee Zellweger didn't do it in those movies where she was fat. She used a fat suit in those. Right. Right. Yeah. But we need full. We need yeah, full. Yeah, no, full length. You're right. Forget it. All right. Forget it. <laughs> yeah. I don't. Fat. Yeah. You don't see it. You don't see it as often, or ever. Really. <laughs> Selena Gomez can fluctuate weight wise. And if she wants the Oscar, she goes young Linda Ronstadt, and young Linda Ronstadt is uh, size two. You know, I mean, like, you know, 115 pounds or 20 pounds. She goes way down, and then she goes De Niro and bulks it up for the end of the career. I don't think she'll do it, but if she wants it, that's the way to do it. Yeah, you're right. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, um, it's set. What about Charlize Theron in uh, Monster? She, oh, yeah, she, she, she ugly. She, she, I think ugly. she uglied herself up, and she probably did pack on a, a couple. I mean, yeah, she gained perfect. like 50 15. pounds in three months. 50? 50. That's what the internet that's says. That's a perfect. That seems unthinkable, but Jeez. that is a good point, and I was thinking of her when I was talking about it. That is an example of a woman diving into a role and packing on the pounds. But is there a role? She was just big the whole movie. Is there the Raging Bull scenario? Mm. If Selena Gomez wants that Oscar, that's what she'll do. Shoot the fat scenes first. Yeah. You know, shoot out a sequence, right? And then go full keto and get it down to young Linda. Mm Mm-hmm. Did did she won the Academy Award that year, Charlize Theron, right, for for that role? 
I bet she did. That she want, put the 50 pounds on. Yeah. So you don't put 50 pounds on and not go home with something. Yeah. You got to go home with an Academy Award at 50 pounds. Yeah. Still doesn't look like 50 pounds. When you're, Her face is still skinny, but... When, when you're 100... Belly. When you're 125 pounds, 175 is fucking big. Well, she definitely packed it on. Let's hope she won the award. <laughs> All right. What else? Um, so, Bill Belichick. He's officially out as coach. Hold on. Don't you feel like we talk about Selena Gomez a little too much? I'm I'm not exactly sure what she biggest, does. Well, she's uh she's a, obviously the pop singer. Um, only murders in the building is her big, her big. I show. get it. And she, she was like a star. She hangs out with Taylor Swift. She yeah, hangs so. out with Taylor Swift. But is it is, Selena Gomez's name? Like you know what? She's taking a break from social media. Like have <laughs> that's I got, right. She have is. a sixty-five-year-old uh, Armenian Uber driver who would go. Do you hear about Selena Gomez? <laughs> she's taking a break. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck do we care? So much. I, I, I'm gonna. My Mount Rushmore is Jennifer Aniston, Selena Gomez, and um, oh God, what's her name from Modern Family? Sophia. Sophia Vergara. Like I do not need to know everything these bitches are thinking every fucking step of the way. I just don't need to know. I I don't dislike either one of them, and I think they're all talented. I just don't need to know what they're thinking every time I turn on. Billy Bush on X-ray just pops up and he's like, Sof- Sophia Regaro. And I'm like, I, every show. Or it's Selena Gomez or it's Jennifer Aniston. I just, is it because they have the best publicist? J-Lo's in there too. Like, I just don't need to know what they're thinking all day, every day. But are these are these outlets covering it because they want, are they pushing her out or because the there's an audience for it? Like, I mean... They're obviously they they probably don't even want to cover Selena Gomez, but it gets the most clicks. It gets the most views. People love her. I get. Well, I I don't think it's that they love her. I think it's that that she divides a nation. You know, they hate her, and then she gets into she gets into beefs with people, yeah. and then they have then she goes after Kylie Jenner. You know, and then there's an issue. I think they like the drama. Yeah, they like the drama part of Selena yeah. Gomez, and, and now Taylor Swift's getting involved. She right. never got backlash, love that. and she, now she's getting backlash, and she doesn't know how to handle it, which is great. Selena Gomez gets a kidney from her best friend, and now they have a beef. You know, and then, <laughs> right. then they come on, they go, "Someone gave me a kidney. I would forever be grateful <laughs> yeah. to that person." So that's what they like about it. Yeah, that's what they like about it—the beef part. Right. Yeah, well, chicks like beef. They 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 say they don't, but they like it. Love it. They love it. We'll see how she does playing Linda. I mean, this could uh, she could be she could sing and she looks like her. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Bill Belichick out as coach for the New England Patriots. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Mm. So reminder, he holds the record for most Super Bowl victories and appearances by a head coach, as well as the most conference and division titles. All came during his 24 year tenure with the team, the fifth longest coaching tenure in NFL history. He he's getting. His legacy got uh, Joe Pod, Joe Paterno. <laughs> yeah, he, he got should've... Joe Paterno. This 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 <laughs> genius, this man that everyone looked up to, this strategist that could do no wrong. And then Brady leaves, goes and wins the Super Bowl. He goes four and twelve, and. He completely Joe pod himself for the this last be a better four, four years. Analogy of season. Than no, it's no, it's no better analogy than a coach who has fallen from grace. Okay. Yeah, because you know we always thought is it Brady or is it Belichick? When they split, we go all right. Well, let's see who who it really was. And Brady wins a Super Bowl. That's right. In his first year, and goes back to like the championship game in his second year. And Belichick, you know, the team just falters. Goes. I think they went like nine and seven the first year, but then they've been eight, nine, four and twelve, and now he's out. Yeah. So it was him. Yeah. It's yeah. not like Joe Pa ever put his hands on anyone, Chris. Ah. He was just, oh. he was just there. Right, right. Mm-hmm. We'll have to have Byron look into that. Um, so He's yeah. going to join another team. He's like 16 wins away from breaking Don Shula's all-time record for wins. Oh, and really? that's what he wants, yeah. Yeah, he's totally hireable somewhere Yeah, else, and but... I'm a Miami fan, so I would want him to retire, but I know he's not going to, so <laughs> he's going to break it. He'll yeah. go to the Chargers. That's a perfect spot for mm-hmm. him. I they agree. already got a quarterback. They got receivers. They got a good, decent defense. They needed a coach there. He'll be living in L.A. Mm-hmm. He'll love it. Yeah, that's that's if if they pay him. The the problem with the charges they've been notoriously cheap. And Belichick ain't working for six million dollars a year. He's going to want like twenty. Really, twenty mil. 
probably 15 to 20 mil, yeah. Really? Yeah. Some The Redskins will pay him. Boston well, will pay I'm him. I'm going to do my mom. I'm doing my mom from the grave. Tell me how much Bill Belichick needs to coach an NFL team. 15 to 20 million. And a school teacher <laughs> in, in Riverside <laughs> County gets $44,000 a year. A school teacher. And all this guy does is tell these big loaf, these big oafs, go run that way. Go run this way. That's all he does. That's what he just does. He, he talks to millionaires prima donnas and just tell them, oh, you guys all get in line and we're just going to hand the ball to this guy and then you run that way. But these school teachers who shape youth are getting $44,000 a year and Bill Belichick's getting 50. Do you think that's right? Um, well, maybe we're... Do you the, think it's right? Don't take the summer off and you, maybe you'll make more money. <laughs> My friend Bert is a school teacher in Riverside. <laughs> that, that, that's my mom from the grave. Right. Right. Okay. I always love when they take the game, you know. These yeah. giants, they hand them the ball in basketball, and they just stand under the hoop, and they just drop it into a hole, and he gets millions of dollars But a school teacher. They're not even running the whole time. They just stand there, and they, they throw the ball to the tall guy, and he just drops it into the hole. And he gets forty million dollars a year and a school teacher. <sighs> no balance. My friend Agnes oh. is a is a works special needs in Riverside County at school. She gets forty one thousand dollars a year and Bill Belichick <laughs> for barely working a couple months out of the year, just telling big rich guys run that way, just go. You just go run with the ball and to just go put it over there. And he gets sixteen million dollars a year. You think that's fair? Yes. <laughs> this dinner's over. Yeah. Your mom ruined football. Good. I want to get out of this conversation with her. <laughs> just, just, yes, I agree. Oh, I love, yeah, first thing like... they have to do is completely simplify what these people do. <laughs> right. Into something. Your friend Berta should start coaching professional football then and really get in on this cash train, mom. Your doofus friend. All right. But bro. yeah. Um, so speaking of Massachusetts, so there's a Massachusetts woman who is suspected of trying to poison her husband with tainted soup after a person posing as a soap opera star online told her, get rid of him. Yeah. Yeah. So she, she was basically being catfished. She, she, uh, she sent this guy or this woman money, the person catfishing her, and then eventually got into a plot where the guy was like, hey... Um, we should we should get rid of your husband and she she messaged him back like all right I'm poisoning his soup yeah that 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 relationship is not built on a bedrock of trust you know what I mean if you can just if you're one text away from murder that's pre there's probably not a lot of good history there and you didn't even meet the person yet I could see if right. you're having a tour affair you right know, and you're like I'm gonna leave them this is I've got finally got some excitement in my life. So they call nine one one. He gets the, the the guy goes to the hospital. Um, he's okay, but the daughter became suspicious. Went into the text messages, saw what was going on. Who it. who is more gullible in that department? Like in the catfish department, meaning you see a picture of the woman. Um, she looks the part in her 60s dental hygiene's not great got a got a gut on her and some gray hair but she thinks that the soap opera star is interested do you know what i mean which which you and i would go oh come on sweetheart he's dating a 25 year old model right. you, you know what i mean he's not interested in you but but she believes in love and in herself you know what i mean she's not seeing what we're seeing in the mirror when she looks in the mirror right but dudes are pretty gullible, too. They get catfished all the time, too. Who is more gullible? Because, again, if you see this woman and, and you see the soap star, you'll go, baby, did you really think this is what he was interested in? But she did. I think, I think it's older people. Older people are more gullible? Yeah. How like, old is the woman? 64. She is 64. Yeah. So... <laughs> 
Like I, I personally know old people who have been scammed on, you know, hey, like my my grandmother was called saying, hey, we have my brother's name's Marvin. We have Marvin in another country here. We need he can't get out. We need you to send us like a thousand dollars. And she did it. First off, that would never work on my grandma. She'd be like, keep him. Keep him. <laughs> she would believe him. <laughs> <laughs> How but much? She'd again? be all right with it. Yeah. That douchebag, good luck. He never stops yeah. talking. <laughs> have fun. <laughs> <laughs> no one's getting any sleep over there. He's going to be complaining the whole fucking time. Keep him. Oh, by the way, thousand dollars. She saved. She sent a thousand. I, I mean, I, I could get got the number wrong. Right. She. Yeah. She sent money. That's to these, to that's these scammers. that's gullible. But it's still not her thinking that a soap star wanted a banger. Mm. You know what I mean? That's that's what <laughs> that I'm you never saying. Met. Sorry, you had to picture that or anything. Right? Yeah. Now, how was? Did I know who the soap star was? Yeah. They, um, let me let me get the because it was like a good looking young guy. And it's no, like, he was. I mean, he's, he's good. He's beautiful. good looking. It's got the word beautiful in the title, so you know you can't be a three. Right. Thorsten yeah. K. He was. Name. He was a little bit age appropriate. Okay. Like a little bit younger, probably, but look, but handsome. Okay. You know what I mean? I think so a lot of these telemarketers that call like they're scam. They're scammers, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you you deal with them a lot. Like it's just. Like I had, I've been getting calls from the same number all the time about like some energy commission because uh, for my home, and I and I told them like, can you please take me off the list? Can you please stop calling me? And the guy's like, why do you have a phone if you don't want calls? That's, <laughs> That's what a he, good point. <laughs> why do you have a door if you don't want a gangbanger to kick yeah. it in? I said a complete opposite. I give my number out to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you use it. You, yeah, I love it. It's content for you. All right, let's do another. Um, so Steve Martin, speaking mm. of only murders in the building. Everyone loves Steve Martin. Yeah. Um, mm. Well, he has gone out and uh, and supported Joe Coy for his Golden Globes oh, that's hosting nice. gig. So he, he went on Threads, which is uh, Meta's version of Twitter or X, and he says, I tip my hat to anyone who steps out on stage to host a live awards show. It's a very difficult job and not for the squeamish. I know because I'm still throwing up from the last time I did it in 2010. So congratulations to Joe Coy, who took on the toughest gig in show business, hit, missed, was light on his feet, and now is 20 minutes of new material for a stand-up. That's a good, that's a good take on it. Yeah. It's a little, it's good. It's, it's got a tinge of like, listen, Jim Florentine got the shit kicked out of him in the octagon, but I tipped the cap that he went into it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I would have never fucking, <laughs> I would have never gone in with Randy Couture because Jim <laughs> has no formal training and he got his ass kicked in four seconds. But I wouldn't have done it. Like that's pretty good. You have to admire his his stones. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that part of it's not that complimentary. That part, like, like if someone said, if you got off stage and <laughs> doing a stand-up set and people are like, yeah, not, you know, it wasn't that funny, but it took a lot of balls to get up yeah, there. Yeah, just so you went up in front of that crowd is crazy. Yeah, um, but that's good. And the part where he said it was some hits and some misses. Right. That's true. He was light on his feet. That is true. And the truest part is he's got 20 minutes of new stand-up material, which is ultimately true yeah so, and it's uh, worth it's worth it for him yeah look you do four minutes of jokes it's like you can't come up with four minutes uh, some are gonna bomb but who cares you know and then you can't just blame it on the writers yeah that one the ones that work are mine the ones that the writers wrote the, the, i didn't write that one yeah I that think, was a comic up there floundering you know when that he's not used to bombing i know? think i think the problem i mean we've all experienced this jim florentine where you go here's how this is working in my head and then here's how it's actually working and sometimes you get out there and what's happening is much different than what happened in your head like the day before when you were thinking about it yeah. and that's the tough realization sometimes it goes the right direction sometimes you go fucking hey this is rock and roll like i didn't even expect this big a reaction but here we're rolling now but sometimes it goes the other direction, and that industry crowd is not not what you want for that. You have to – I would almost say for that crowd, you need to almost put training wheels on your act and just go, I'm going to make it as basic, as simple as uh, – there's, there's, 
it's almost like I'm not swinging for the fences. I'm making contact. I have to make Basically. contact with. I'm going to fucking choke up a little on this bat and punch some doubles yeah. into left field. I'm not going for the fence. So it's almost like you crap. want AI to write the jokes. I want AI, <laughs> AI to write the jokes. <laughs> well, you know, uh, homework for you. Get AI Joe Coy uh, hosting the Golden Globes next year and then get the actual transcript of it and uh, we'll see. <laughs> How um, that goes. So there's this magazine called Ms. Magazine. Ms. Yeah, it's a feminist magazine. Mm-hmm. And they wrote about Joe Coy's performance, obviously, Mm-mm. scathing review. Mm. Um, and then they went through some of his jokes. And then they put, in, as a as a side note, you caught a stray, is what the kids would say in this one. It says, Coy appears. I caught a stray. Yeah, Adam did. Oh. Um, Coy appears as a weekly guest host on the Adam Carolla Show podcast. Hold on. I. First off, every single article I read about me or my car collection or whatever is everything is wrong every time. He's a weekly guest <laughs> guest, guest host, host so yeah. I'm somewhere else. Yeah, he's filling in for you. All so right. he's not a weekly guest host. He he's no. shows up as much as you show up. Right. Okay, yeah. But, but you would you would <laughs> be, be as be. accurate saying that Jim Florentine is a weekly guest host of the Adam Carolla show. Okay. Over yeah. over the last few years, he used to come in on a regular basis, but it was never weekly. Right. All right. Um, so, yeah, weekly guest host on the Adam Carolla Show podcast. Carolla has said of his politics, quote, I want a secure border. I'm not into the welfare state. I'm not into all those freebie lunch programs and of women comedians. Chicks are always the least funny on the writing staff, and dudes are funnier than chicks. So. Yeah. I, <laughs> no, I was asked who's funnier. 15 years ago, I yeah, did an interview. They went, still bring that who's up. funnier, men or women? I go, men. I, what am I going to say? It's a tie? Yeah, you're right. Here are my choices. It's exactly the same, <laughs> statistically. <laughs> or women are funnier, or men are funnier. I said men are funnier, but they're trying to get laid. It's it's in their culture to get laid. To be funny, you can get laid. Women, funny, ugly, funny women don't get laid any more than... A, a, you, a guy wouldn't take a funny three over a completely humorless six. Nope. Nope. But a woman will take a three of a dude who has a great sense of humor uh, over over seven on a dude. That's why we're funny. But anyway, I said, men. But I also don't like when people don't answer the question. Plus, I know many more dudes who are in comedy than women who are in yeah, comedy. Yeah, I mean, the, the right. ratio is, you know. And I'm loosely basing it on my mom. Right. Do you think Bill Belichick right. deserves so the millions half right. yeah. and a school teacher? Yeah, I'm basing it on them. But I'm like, he's a weekly guest host. Yeah. Okay. You, yeah. Should, you should also be interested in some of the other headlines on stories that they have at Ms. Magazine. Punish, torture, kill. The reality of pregnancy in pro-life America. I hate that game. <laughs> Me too. Mm-hmm. Close. All the, time. the Oscar-nominated movie that names the threat in our sons' lives, and finally, my favorite, the rape of the girl with the dragon tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we know where they're coming. Yeah. Jim, there's. A, I think there's. Jim's got to catch a flight. I just want to play something. Do you have Megan Kelly? Because somebody tweeted me this, which is, I would fuck up whenever Joe Coy was in here. I'd call him Joy. Yeah, whenever when he's guest hosting, because it's every week when he comes in Monday bright and early. Because <laughs> the name is J O. Yeah, and then I guess it's K O Y, and I see the Y at the end. I just go Joy, and I fuck up, and it's a running joke, and he hates it. <laughs> sure, other people don't do it, but I would always fuck up and say Joy instead of Joe Coy. Well, now someone else has joined my my ranks. There was a guy named Joy Coy. Joy Coy. <laughs> sorry, Joe. Yeah. She's so, probably a listener on a podcast. She does love me. And I would argue that we have the same brain. I think we'll be in a very different body. Right. But I heard when we read, we really only look at the first and the last letter, and then the the middle could be scrambled and you'd still be able to know what the word is. Yeah, let's hear so. it. Let's hear it one more time. That's a cut, by the way. She it took a little longer for her to figure it out in real life. Or whatever. There was a what if, that's what was tweeted to me? No, that was the, I just told him to get the clips of her saying joy. Oh, because the one that got tweeted to me was a real time. But anyway, go ahead. There was a guy named Joy Coy. Joy Coy. Sorry, Joe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. So that's what I do. 
Great minds. Jim Florentine's <laughs> got to catch a flight. Yeah. So he's got to hustle it up to uh, LAX. Bite the Bullet is the name of the special. It's available on Amazon Prime podcasts as well. Everyone is awful except you. And JimFlorentine.com is where you go for live dates. Yeah, I'll be in else. Rochester, Albany, New York, Orlando, Florida coming up. Yeah, JimFlorentine.com.